The 2017 BMW 3 Series. For over 40 years, BMW has been building the 3 Series, and yet, over the decades, it just keeps getting better and better. I'm Jay, and welcome to this latest episode of Car Buzz Unboxing Reviews. I want to thank Neo BMW for letting us come on down and film today. So right, the BMW 3 Series, specifically this is a 330i, but I'll get more into trims and uh, different engines as uh, we go throughout the review here. Just to give you some brief uh, 3 Series history here, because I think this is really important. Um, the 3 Series first launched in 1975, and yeah, it's still considered the benchmark premium sports sedan on the market. Uh, it has spawned so many competitors and imitators, and only until recently have other automakers really caught up to what the 3 Series can do. And you got to think of the 3 Series as the way Porsche relates and thinks of the Porsche 911. It is sort of its definitive car. It's what defines the brand in so many ways, and just the way... Porsche keeps evolving the 911, BMW just keeps evolving the 3 Series. And this is the 6th generation uh, 3 Series model, internally called the F30. And it launched for 2012, and it was just given a midlife refresh last year. But um, one of the biggest complaints I have about it um, is that the competition has caught up with it, and BMW really needs to launch an all-new redesigned 3 Series, the 7th generation model, uh, sooner rather than later. But from the moment you look at it, it's like, yeah, this, this car, its proportions are fantastic. And once you step inside, this interior, it, it, it's just a winning design. Again, this is the brand that, has, that created the premium sports sedan segment. Um, it doesn't really get a whole lot better than this. Well, maybe back in 2012, this was the car that Audi, Mercedes-Benz, Cadillac were racing to try to beat. And well, with the latest versions of the Audi A4, the Mercedes C-Class, and even the new Cadillac ATS, well, they've come pretty darn close if not have exceeded this. Now this car here, it has Oyster Dakota leather for an extra $1,450. But you get a lot of standard features here. You get um, iDrive, the latest version of it, with a 6.5-inch center screen and a controller with eight programmable memory buttons, 10-way uh, power front sport seats with driver's seat memory. Uh, you also get an upgraded navigation system here for an extra $1,950, heated front seats for $500. But you also get a lot of other standard things, such as a three-spoke leather-wrapped steering wheel, automatic climate control, ambient lighting, and an anthracite headliner. Ah, the rear seat. Now, this is another issue I do take with the current 3 Series. This rear seat, it, it, it's kind of snug. You're lacking legroom. You can even see it right here without somebody just sitting there. Um, BMW really needs to improve that for the next generation. But then again, if you need a, a larger rear seat to accommodate people comfortably, there is always the 5 Series, and that was just redesigned completely, uh, and the, the, the latest generation 5 Series will be in dealerships probably within the next few months. But back to this 3 Series here. Now from the driver's seat, oh man, um, I remember the dash design and the previous 5th generation, the E90 3 Series, and it was nice, but this one is even nicer. The ergonomics here are, are just fantastic. Everything is just laid out perfectly for the driver. And that's what the other thing I really appreciate about BMWs is they're just so driver focused. You can even tell there that, that the dashboard is slightly angled towards the driver. In fact, it is like that with all BMWs. And of course, you have your transmission lever here. This is now, uh, I'll get to more details about that shortly. This is not a dual clutch, it's an eight speed automatic. If you want a dual clutch, for example, the, the seven speed dual clutch, you're gonna have to upgrade to the M3. Ah uh, yes, this is that typical rotary dial in the center console, it controls iDrive. And as I've said before, BMW has really gotten iDrive down really, really well. Took a few years, just the idea of creating something new, an infotainment system controlled by that rotary dial, when it was launched in 2001, 2002, it was such a new thing. People just didn't, it took a few years for it to really get off the ground and BMW has just perfected it here. 
But this is a six and a half inch screen, like I said. Now on the new Audi A4, you should check out my, my review of that. That has a 12.3 inch LCD screen. In fact, it's got two of them. One right in the center uh, dash here and the other one in the driver's gauge cluster. So yeah, that just gives you an idea of the aged 3 Series that you see here. Again, there's a huge, huge difference between 2012 and 2016. But aside from the screen, I think being a, a bit too small, uh, everything worked really, really well, even with the, uh, the automatic climate control system here and the overall design of the dash, uh, it, it's just excellent. And um, I really hope BMW uh, improves upon it or just sticks with something similar to this in the next generation three series. Now, one of the kind of interesting things that's going on internally at BMW right now is, I don't want to call it, let's say, um, a civil war, but let's just say there's three different factions who are all trying to uh, lobby for control. For example, there's the futurists who are all about doing nothing but EVs and hybrids, plug-in hybrids. Then they're up against, let's say, the mainstream who are pushing for more luxury and refinement. And then, of course, you have the ultimate driving machine purists. And those are the ones who they, they don't want to give up their inline sixes, the inline six engines rather, or all that uh, great suspension tuning. They, they want to keep building that ultimate uh, driving machine. And you got to remember when this three series de debuted way back in 1975, the original E30, um, BMW wasn't so much a luxury brand. It was just a more of a, of a driver's focused foreign German brand there and well over the years it's joined the mainstream and this is basically a mainstream 3 series and it's going to be very very interesting to see with the upcoming 7th generation model just what BMW is going to give us ah uh, yes you got this power moonroof here now that is actually optional would I like to see a panoramic sunroof of course so hopefully that'll come in the next generation model as well so let's talk safety here now again because this car has been around for several years now it's gone through all the necessary crash tests uh for example we got a five out of five overall star score from the u.s government uh in its crash testing it also comes standard with uh, adaptive brake lights front and rear uh, uh, head protection system driver and passenger airbags seat mount and front side impact airbags front knee airbags and even this car for an extra 45 bucks it comes with the first aid kit so how does it drive? Well, it's great. It, it, it's just, it's great in cornering. You feel the road with it. Um, there's four uh, driving modes. You have Eco Pro, Comfort, Sport, and Sport Plus. Now, um, this is the basic driving mode system, and I imagine most drivers of this 3 Series are going to stick with Comfort uh, a majority of the time. And these front seats, they're just, they're so firm and supportive. And, and, and these are the, the, the base seats that they come with it. You don't, you don't need to upgrade for really expensive seating. You can, of course. But the, what the car just comes with is more than good enough. And it should because this is a BMW. They've turned BMW into a luxury brand. You should be getting good stuff like that. Now, this car is also equipped with the $950 driver assistance package where you get a rear view camera, an upgraded one, and the park distance control. Uh, other uh, driving aids are dry, uh, dynamic stability control with brake fade compensation, dynamic traction control, high performance, uh, lightweight four-wheel ABS uh, system, dynamic brake control, and a cornering brake control as well. So, yeah, take a look at this. Going into the rear seat, see what I mean? It, it, it's kind of snug. And I don't know, I, I, I think that lack of, of leg room and knee room that you see here is really something BMW needs, uh, needs to fix. Now, another sign this car is aging here, uh, there's not even a climate control system for the rear seat passengers. You know, you're start, we're starting to see more and more tri-zone automatic climate control, quad zone automatic climate control this one doesn't even come with dual you got to pay extra for that too
And what I like about just a sports sedan is you just it does everything so well. You don't need a crossover. For example, this trunk, 17 cubic feet. It's more than good enough. You combine with a 40 by 20 by 40 split folding rear seats. I mean, you got plenty of cargo room. I, I, I just don't know why everybody thinks they need a crossover. Like, how much stuff are you going to really be putting in your cars? I don't know. How many times can you go to Costco or Target and just fill up with stuff that you can't easily fit into a sedan like this? Yeah, see, there you go. Plenty of space right there. And I really doubt that people are going to need to fold the rear seats down a, a lot of the time. The regular 17 cubic feet trunk is, is more than good enough. So let's talk about some of the other body styles you can get with the 3 Series. You have this, obviously, the sedan. There's also the wagon and the Gran Turismo, which is a five-door hatchback. I recently did a review of the 5 Series or the 535i uh, Gran Turismo. Five-door hatchback, too, but... In the 3 Series, I think the design works a bit better. All right, under the hood, this is a 2-liter turbocharged inline 4 with 248 horsepower and 258 pound-feet of torque. Like I said earlier, it's paired to an 8-speed automatic with paddle shifters. And, of course, you can get the 3 Series with all-wheel drive. In BMW's uh, language terms, they call it X-Drive. It'll cost you an extra $2,000. But, again, this is a rear-wheel drive platform. The 3 Series, like the 5 and 7 Series, will always be rear-wheel drive. That is an essential trait right there. But let's, let's uh, give this engine a listen here. All right, it yeah, it sounds pretty good. BMW great builds great engine. What, what can I say? Uh, performance zero to sixty miles per hour in five point four seconds. Top speed is electronically limited to one hundred fifty five miles per hour. Fuel economy twenty three miles per gallon in the city, thirty four on the highway, and a combined twenty seven. The car weighs just over three thousand five hundred pounds. Now the other available three series models out there is that what's nice is that. It comes in different flavors, aside from the body styles like uh, L. And of course, the coupe version is now called the 4 Series. I did a review of that as well. Check it out. All right. The base engine that you can get in the 3 Series today is the 320i model. You get uh, a turbo uh, 2 liter inline 4 with 180 horsepower and 200 pound feet of torque. I don't think that's quite powerful enough, but it's good enough for, for some people. Then you have... The uh, after after the 320 320i you have this the 330i followed by the 340i now that has a turbo three liter inline six with 320 horsepower and 330 pound feet of torque and then there is the 328d d as in diesel really turbo two liter diesel with 180 horsepower and 280 pound feet of kick it's pretty impressive. And then if you're really into technology and fuel efficiency, there is a 330EI Performance. And that has a turbo 2 liter inline four paired to an electric motor for a combined output of 248 horsepower and 310 pound feet of, of torque. So again, look at this exterior styling. It's great. The dimensions are just perfect. You have the short front overhang, the long hood, the short rear deck. Those are quintessential three series design traits right there. This car is painted alpine white. It's got upgraded 18 inch alloy sport wheels for $600. LED headlights, LED fog lights. You have the matte chrome exterior trim. This one's also equipped with the premium package for $2,450. That uh, includes that, uh, that sunroof that you saw there, as well as a Sirius XM radio one year subscription. So let's talk pricing. Now a base, 320i uh, 3 Series begins at $33,450. Now, our car, the 330i, carries a base price of $38,450. Now, with all the features plus the $995 destination, the car you're looking at right here, $47,715. Now, that might sound a little bit expensive, but considering the competition, uh, the Audi A4, Mercedes-Benz C-Class, the new Alfa Romeo Giulia, the Jaguar XE, uh, the Cadillac ATS, the Infiniti Q50, it, 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 it matches. The pricing, it, it, it's all within that premium uh, luxury sports sedan segment right there. Now, there is also the 4 Series Grand Coupe, which is, well, it has four-door coupe styling. And that costs, well, 
a little bit more money, but I wouldn't go for it. I think the three series sedan is just fine. Now, what do I like here? Well, excellent steering response overall. The Turbo 4, it's not only fuel efficient, but it's also fairly powerful. It's good. And I really like the interior uh, ergonomics. Now, what don't I like? Um, the four banger, it just doesn't sound as good as the inline six. Um, now the steering response, it's good, but it's not as good as the previous three series generation. And that's because BMW switched from hydraulic to electrical steering assist. And above all the, look, as much as I like the exterior and interior designs, they are aging fast. And um, they look a little bland compared to the new A4 and C Mercedes-Benz C-Class. But I'm out of time for today, everyone. Thanks for watching. If you have any more questions for me, just leave them in the comment section below. And I'll see you on my next unboxing review.